I get a lot of comments talking about how aggressive snakes are, saying that all snakes will pretty much bite, and that the ones that I caught didn't bite because they were pets. Boom! No! No, not the elbow! <laughs> Yeah, okay. But the truth of the matter is, is that snakes are a bit more complicated than that. There are thousands of species, each one with its own disposition and distinct behaviors. So today, we're back in South Louisiana swamps to find as many different tempered snakes as we can. What's going on guys? I'm Zachary Gray, and today we're back out in some of my favorite swamp looking for snakes. Now this area is really good for lots of different species. And they're all going to have completely different temperaments. Some of your snakes are going to be completely placid, and some of them just do not want to be messed with. And depending on what the temperatures are, is going to define what we're going to find. Today is a really good day to find king snakes, rat snakes. I'd have to guess we'd see some water snakes as well. And our ever-present grumpy cottonmouth. So should be a good day. We should see some snakes. That little snake. That's king snake. Oh, that's a nice one. This time of year, end of summer, these snakes are going to be moving. Hey, bud. Mad at me? Ah, uh, he's trying to musk on me. This a nice speckled king snake. Now, king snake's natural defense is typically going to be that musk. But sometimes you'll get them where they rattle their tail at you, where they bite. Now, speckled king snakes are kind of our regional king snake species here in Louisiana, specifically in the south. And these swamp habitats are a really good place for them to be hanging out. That speckling is a really good camouflage up and along forest edges and grasses, as well as in wetland. So whenever there's a lot of vegetation down in these little swampy areas, this is a really camouflaged snake. It might not look like it in my hand, but typically, they're kind of hard to spot. On average, your king snakes are gonna be your more gentle species. Maybe not as much as rat snakes and corn snakes, but as you can see, this one's not trying to bite me. Very placid, and this is a good snake to have around buildings and other places where people are. One, because they eat rats and mice, same as many other snakes, but they also are gonna be eating other snakes. In fact, very recently, while doing a survey, we had found a king snake that actually spit up another snake. And people do run into these snakes eating other snakes quite often. I have to guess in this kind of habitat, he'd be eating, oh, I don't know, copperheads, cottonmouths, water snakes, other king snakes. They'll eat pretty much any other snake. Well, that's a nice snake to be seen crossing the road. We're gonna go ahead and put him back into here. This is the direction he was heading. Probably heading to this dead tree right here. Stuff like this is gonna be really good for your speckled king because it can thermoregulate on it. I've seen a bunch of them around these kinds of trees. And this is probably what he was heading towards, so I'm just gonna put him right around it. And watch him go. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah, I'd hear you. Cool snake. We're gonna keep moving. That is awesome. That snake was perfectly chill. King snakes can vary in disposition quite a bit, but I'd say about 50% of the ones that I find won't even try to strike. And even if they did, they're perfectly harmless. The temperature and surrounding environment can play a big role in a snake's disposition. Typically, they're gonna be a bit more wiry as it gets hot. So it's off the road and onto some trails to hunt some more shaded areas. So morning times, you can see things kinda of on the move, but then once that midday heat sets in, you wanna to go to more shaded areas, places that are more wooded with a lot more canopy. And temperature really affects the disposition of animals. Snakes are a cold-blooded animal. They have to regulate their temperature based on their surroundings. And that's why you can run into the same animal and they will presumably have different temperaments, but you might have just caught them on a bad day. Little garter snake. Hey, bud. How are you doing? This is a little eastern garter snake. Very dark colored one, actually. Look at you. Ah, yeah, very smelly snake species. They won't always bite, but they will almost always musk on you in self-defense. Now when they do try to bite, they're very dramatic. They go, ah, they open their mouth and they don't do like a normal good whack like other snakes do. They kind of do like a, like a flare. They definitely don't want you messing with them. They're not calm. They're very whippy. Like as you can see, whenever I hold him, he's like, he starts getting jittery. He's like launching himself. They don't like being messed with. Now some of them will bite and garter snakes in particular have a little bit of a toxin in their saliva. They're really not a good one to get bit by. And a lot of people refer to these animals as garden snakes. The actual term is garter snake, but uh, garden snakes, they're named that because 
they are so common. You'll see them in your garden. Now around here, ribbon snakes are the more common. This is a big eastern garter snake, and there are lots of different kinds of garter snakes. Most of them are going to be pretty similar. They smell, sometimes I'd say it's like 75% chance that they'll try and bite you. That one like kind of turned to try to get me when I first grabbed it. I wouldn't consider them like water snakes and racers and stuff, because sometimes you can just pick them up and they just kind of sit there like this, but they almost always try to do what that one did there and musk on you. So definitely not the most pleasant snake, but definitely not one of the meanest either. Really cool, common species that many of you have run into, I'm sure. We're gonna go ahead and put this one back and keep looking for more, but that is a little Eastern garter snake. All right, there you go, bud. Get out of here. Not only is natural tree cover good for snakes, but man-made structures work as well. Any place where snakes can find their favored conditions, be it drier and cooler or more humid and warm, that's where you're gonna find them. Now this is some of my favorite stuff to look for snakes in, because you never know what you're gonna see. Uh, I would suspect rat snakes and king snakes in little crevices like that. And then in all these little burrows along the bottom, you'll get your copperheads and cottonmouths. Cottonmouths are really gonna more just sit there and stand their ground, they're just not gonna move. They're just gonna be like, you go away, I'm not going anywhere. But all your other snakes living up and along this have all their little escape routes, and that's the snakes. The main strategy of survival against a person is not to stand up to or be mean, but to get out of your way. But what? Have a look at that. It's a little Texas rat snake. They'll oftentimes get wedged up in these little cracks and crevices. I can use my snake hook to kind of coax him out. Hey, bud. Perfectly safe snake. They're non-venomous. And they can vary in temperament. Sometimes they'll try to bite. But I don't think this one's gonna. He seems pretty chill. Oh, wow. He's pretty. Look at that. Hey, bud. He's got some red on him. This is a very variable snake species. And to get him out, I got him out here. Just touch his tail. Boop, boop, boop. They don't like when you touch their tails. And then they come flying out. <laughs> Look at that snake. This is a really nice example of a, of a bright orange Texas rat snake. Now Texas rat snakes get a lot bigger than this. They're quite a large snake species. They can grow over six foot long easily when they're an adult. And as you can see, he hasn't tried to bite me not once. Now, half the time, a rat snake, when you pick them up, they're gonna pull their head back and open their mouth wide, like ah, and they're gonna try to bite you like that. Just like people, just like any other animal, each one is gonna have their own distinct disposition. And this rat snake, while he doesn't really like being picked up, I can kind of feel he's trying to get away from me. He's not trying to bite me. He's not whipping around all over the place. He's not musking on me. So rat snakes overall, pretty well-tempered snake. And that's why you're oftentimes going to see these animals in the pet trade. Corn snakes and many other rat snakes are very popular pets. Now they're a great snake to keep around because like I said, they'll be in barns, houses, places like that eating mice and rats. And they cause no problems. They're not going to damage your house in any way. They're not going to damage any kind of buildings. All they do is follow mice and rats into their tunnels, into their burrows, and eat as many as they can before moving on or sticking around somewhere if there's a good place for them to hang out. I would have to guess that he's got burrows, little tunnels, all kinds of stuff up and along this little bridge here that he'd be living in. Here you go, bud. Back on you, crevice. As I said before, different species are going to have totally different dispositions, but the individuals matter too. I've had plenty of rat snakes nail me whenever I try to pick them up, but similar to king snakes, sometimes you just find a very chill snake. Unlike this next species, which is almost never chill. Yeah, I'll watch me. Have a look at this little guy. That is a little diamondback water snake. Typically, it doesn't really matter if he bites me because he's just a little baby water snake. He doesn't like me picking him up. He's gonna try to bite me. He's gonna musk on me. He's gonna do everything he can to get back into the water. Now, this is not the norm for all snakes. Not every snake is gonna bite you when you pick it up. Water snakes, however, pretty much every single time you pick one of these guys up, they're gonna try to bite you and they're gonna musk on you. Now, sometimes you can find a pretty chill water snake. They're gonna have different circumstances that are gonna make them have different dispositions. But diamondback water snakes, as you guys have seen in the past, they will try to nail you, they will try to bite you, and these guys get big. In fact, this is our biggest native water snake species. It can be like that big around and eat catfish. So this guy has the potential to be a pretty big 
and pretty gnarly water snake. Really cool little guy, very common species along these little canals and along waterways like this. We're gonna go ahead and put him back and keep looking for more. All right, see a little grumpy snake? Off in the water. What a cool little snake. Even though he's just a baby, he's a water snake through and through. Some species are just bound to be bitey when they're handled, and there are other species you couldn't pay to bite you, like this next little elusive species that spends most of its day in crawfish tunnels. Little snake. Big face full of banana spider web there, but a really nice looking snake. This is a glossy crawfish snake. Look at that little guy. This is a really great snake. They're almost never gonna bite. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen this species bite a single time. You'll notice, not very whippy. This snake's probably never seen a person before, simply due to their lifestyle. Most of the time, they're gonna be spending their life underground in crawfish burrows or in little waterways. And the only reason I'd say he's out is because of all this flooding that we're getting. This is a pretty good time of year to see crawfish snakes, simply because the water gets so high and they're gonna be moving around during this time. And this is also the time of year that the babies are being born. I'd have to assume that this is a female who just had a clutch of babies and they give birth to live young. So they don't lay eggs, similar to water, other water snake species. They just give birth to live young and they drop a pile of babies. The first thing that this snake did when we saw it, slowly started heading towards it, didn't make any quick movements. These are typically a very slow moving snake because they're not out in the open too often. They don't have that immediate rush that a water snake or some other snake species will have. They're just gonna casually slip back into the water. So this is gonna be one of your more friendly snake species. There's many other snakes like this, mud snakes, rainbows, that just will not bite. These snakes don't really care. He's not scared of me. Really cool species. They're called crawfish snakes because they eat crawfish. And while they are fairly plentiful in habitats like this, you just don't see them too often. So really secretive snake. Awesome, fine, we're gonna go ahead and put this one back and keep looking for some more grumpier snake species, but that is a little glossy crawfish snake. All right, see a little crawfish snake? Back to the water with you. There you go. What a cool snake. It just goes to show you that these animals aren't out to get you. Very mild-mannered animals all around. Even what's described as more aggressive species, such as water snakes and cotton mouths, aren't actually seeking out conflict. They're just much more fearful animals than these other snakes, and they try to defend themselves more readily. And honestly, can you blame them? Most of the time, the snake's best option is to crawl away. But when that doesn't work anymore, they feel cornered and confronted. And they'll lash out just as much as any other animal would. And even your more mild-mannered snakes will have times when they just don't want to be messed with. There's not a snake somewhere in this. I will eat my left shoe. Now, having the snake hook is really important for this. King. Oh, check that out. Now, whenever I see a snake like this, my first instinct should not be to grab the snake that I see. But there could have been a copperhead right next to him, a cottonmouth right here. And if I tunnel vision onto that snake, I could easily reach for him and get bit by something else. Good. Whoa. You're a big boy. Woo! Oh, he's grumpy. Now this is a grumpy king snake. Unlike the last one, this one would try to bite me. And I think there's a very particular reason for that. Have a look at his eyes. You can see he's in shed, so he's a lot more aggravated. See how he's rattling his tail, he's got his head back. This snake is displaying to me that he's not happy. Now maybe if he was out of shed, maybe he wouldn't be so grumpy. I don't know. Some king snakes are just grumpy. That last one didn't do any of the behaviors that we're looking at right now. It always depends, but this is a really great animal no matter what. We're going to go ahead and put him back. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to check out the time when we caught a bunch of cotton miles and answered the question if they're aggressive or not. Really great video there. We'll see you guys next time. Woo! That is a big, grumpy king snake. That's awesome. All right, how that big, grumpy king snake go. It's okay guys, I did the pose. I did the, the universal I Tame Dinos pose. And the